In August, FDA issued the 2022 edition of the Voluntary Retail Food Regulatory Program Standards. So what exactly are these standards and what do they mean for retail and food service establishments? I am your TAG Talks host, Lisa Lupo, and today I'm talking with TAG Senior Food Safety Manager, Lily Yang, and Food Safety Manager, Carla Acosta, about the standards and about re retail food safety in general. Good afternoon, Lily and Carla. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. So, Lily, what is the purpose of these retail food safety standards, and are they actually voluntary, as the name seems to indicate? Definitely. Well, the retail food standards, food safety standards, also known as the Voluntary National Retail Food Regulatory Program Standards, are a set of standards and foundations developed cooperatively with the U.S. state, local, territorial, territorial and tribal partners that uses a risk-based approach to leverage limited resources that are meant to build upon existing programs for managing food safety. One outcome of this is the FDA model food code, right? The standards lay a foundation to develop a system for continuous improvement so that we can incorporate both traditional and emerging approaches to food safety. And actually it is voluntary, but it's a very specific type of voluntary, right? So states, localities, territories, tribal partners can, for example, adopt any version of, let's say, one of the FDA model food codes, although most public health departments try to stay, you know, at the latest version. And the retail program standards themselves are a set of nine standards to build capacity at each step. And so any, well, any of these organizations or governmental regulatory bodies can choose to enroll in a program to enhance their pre-existing food safety. Speaking of the FDA model food code, recommend, recommendations for amendments to this and ultimately aspects related to retail and food safety occur at this thing called CFP, the Conference for Food Protection. Okay. So what role does that conference for food protection play in the development of the standards and in the 2022 update? Thank you for asking that, because the thing is, like, people will sometimes see, oh, CFP written across things and like, what is this? And so CFP is actually a nonprofit organization created to provide a formal process, right? Like, that's the wording, a formal process for industry, regulatory, academia, consumers, and other professional organizations and members to have equal input in the development and or modification of food safety guidance. So these, these guidances are incorporated in food safety laws and regulations at all levels of the government. And actually in the 2022 edition of the retail program standards, which again, voluntary, there are changes based on these recommendations made from the 2020 biannual meeting for CFP. And some of these key changes involve reformatted curriculum forms and also worksheets and the inclusion of alternative sampling methods, specifically more on the regulatory side. Okay. So Carla, the concept of active managerial control is also very critical in meeting these standards. Can you explain what this is and why it's important? Absolutely. So active managerial control or AMC is the purposeful incorporation of specific actions and procedures into the daily operations of a retail food service establishment to help control foodborne illness, risk factors, and increase food safety. Now, AMC ensures that you and your employees can reduce food hazards, and it also allows you to build a safe environment for customers free of risk for foodborne illnesses. Now, it's very important to note that AMC embodies a preventive rather than a reactive approach to food safety through a continuous system of monitoring and verification. And AMC consists of three parts. Step one is to create food safety policies and these are what will lay out a clear plan for your employees to follow. So building practical food safety policies is crucial in helping employees reduce food safety hazards, but the policies may vary based on the needs of your establishment. So identifying potential risks is the most important part of creating an effective food safety plan. You should also create a policy for how you will deal with any issues that arise. And with that, you can organize your policies into a hazard analysis and critical control point plan or SIP. And by doing these things, you will have an orderly process in place to manage food risks. Step two is training. So you need to ensure that your employees are trained to your policies so that they know them and can follow them. 
So as a food manager, you are responsible for the safety of your customers. However, you will often have very little contact with the food yourself. So it's very important that you tailor your training to the needs of your facility and employees to create a trusting environment to encourage employees to practice food safety. TAG offers a plethora of food safety training and consulting if you need help getting started. And finally, step three is verification, which is a way to ensure on a regular basis that the policies are being followed. Food workers have many procedures and safe practices to remember, so following up can help them better learn their responsibilities and for you to identify if there's any procedure in your establishment that may need modifications. We recommend that you include a follow-up as part of your regular training. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Carla and Lily, for providing that update on the retail food safety standards, how businesses can best comply, and then just overall um, practices for food safety. And thank you, viewers, for joining us today. Feel free to call on Lily or Carla or any of TAG experts for questions or assistance on retail and food service food safety. And as always, be sure to click subscribe to stay up to date on all things food safety and public health from TAG experts. Thank you.